President Joe Biden has been predictably terrible when it comes to pressuring the Israeli government to stop slaughtering Palestinian civilians. But thankfully, senior House Democrats actually decided to do the right thing and exert pressure on Joe Biden to suspend the weapons deal currently slated to go through because it's a little bit of a bad look if you know especially now those weapons are going to be used against innocent civilians. However, senior House Democrats backed away from that. Yeah, I don't know if the Israeli lobby got to them and, you know, got them to have a change of heart. I don't know if they got cold feet or felt like that effort wasn't going to amount to anything since Joe Biden isn't going to budge. Either way, senior House Democrats decided to be cowards. But thankfully, newer members of Congress, members of the squad, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Rashida Tlaib and others, are stepping up. Politico reports a group of lawmakers is cobbling together an effort to block a controversial sale of precision-guided weapons to Israel as President Joe Biden ratchets up the pressure on Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to bring to a halt the increasingly deadly conflict in Gaza. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is leading the effort along with Representatives Rashida Tlaib, Mark Pocan, Ilhan Omar, and others, according to a draft resolution obtained by Politico. The 11th hour Democratic effort comes one day after a group of senior House Democrats on Tuesday they backed off an emerging push to delay the sale amid intensifying violence in the region. Lawmakers wanted to use the impending arms transfer as leverage to push the Israelis to drop their resistance to a ceasefire. Earlier Wednesday, Biden told Netanyahu that he expected a significant de-escalation today on the path to a ceasefire, according to a White House readout of their phone conversation. Last week, the U.S. blocked efforts by the United Nations Security Council to call for a ceasefire, effectively backing Israel's bombing campaign against Hamas the Palestinian militant group. As of Wednesday, Israel's military operations in Gaza have killed 217 Palestinians, including 63 children, while 12 Israelis have died in the conflict, which escalated after Hamas launched thousands of rockets into Israel. Now I'll just pause here to correct that article. The conflict escalated when Israel chose to do an ethnic cleansing in Sheikh Jarrah. They're the ones who initiated all of this. They're the occupiers. They're the aggressor. So I still think it's important to point that out whenever we see this sort of false equivalence or both sidesism in these sorts of articles. But the point of the article stands that now, thankfully, we have members of Congress, members of the squad, who are actually doing the right thing. Now on Twitter, AOC explained a little bit more about what her goal is, saying the United States should not be rubber stamping weapons sales to the Israeli government as they deploy our resources to target international media outlets, schools, hospitals, humanitarian missions, and civilian sites for bombing. We have a responsibility to protect human rights. It must be said here, amplification is necessary, but not sufficient. Traction on the issue is very dependent on your calls to Congress. Retweets aren't enough. Call your member of Congress and let them know how you'd like to be represented on this matter. Some tips on calling congressional offices. One, don't be scared. Our lines exist to receive your calls. Two, call your member, the one who represents your district. Look it up in the link above. Be kind and clear. You can firmly state your position without being cruel. So she's correct. It's not scary. And to show you how it isn't intimidating, I'm going to call... In a second, I'll call my representative. Uh, but I just want to respond to some of the things that she said here. Like, she specifically cited how Israel is very brazen. They're targeting media outlets. They damaged the road leading to Gaza's main hospital. And if you watched uh, Vosh's 27-hour live stream where he fundraised for the Palestinian Children's Relief Fund, uh, as he was doing the live stream, their building was bombed. It's just they're so brazen bombing these types of humanitarian groups who are literally there to provide medical assistance to Palestinian children. So Israel doesn't care at all. They have no regard for human life. And it's funny, in the article, it cited how Biden, um, his message to uh, Netanyahu was, I expect significant de-escalation. Okay, but what are you going to do about that? Because he's going to hear you and say, okay, thank you very much for your input and continue doing exactly what he's been doing. The way that you actually get him to stop, if you want your words to have any teeth whatsoever, is you have to condition aid, you stop the arms sale. I mean, it's not that difficult. Biden has leverage. He's choosing to not use that leverage. Hence why Netanyahu isn't just continuing with the slaughter in Gaza. They're being brazen. Openly committing war crimes, bombing 
a building that housed Associated Press journalists. So it is important. This is going to be very difficult. I don't have much hopes that this resolution is going to pass. Having said that, though, that doesn't mean that we don't try. So I'm going to call my representative. Her name is Suzanne Bonamici. I'm not going to put her number on the screen as I usually do when I call politicians because I don't want you to call my politician. I want you to call your representative. So I'm going to give uh, her a call to her local office. Thank you for calling Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici's Beaverton office. Out of an abundance of caution and in the interest of everyone's health, the Congresswoman's offices in Washington, D.C. and Oregon are closed while the Congresswoman and her staff work remotely. We will be checking this voicemail regularly and returning calls. Please leave a brief message along with your phone number and email address. The Congresswoman's website is available at bonamici.house.gov. Hello, Representative Bonamici. My name is Michael Figueredo. I am a constituent of yours, and I just want to call to encourage you to support Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's resolution urging the Biden administration to not sell weapons to Israel while they literally carry out a genocide in Gaza. I would love to have you be a leader on this issue and not only support that, but also speak up at the behest of Palestinians who right now are suffering. They can't get in or out of Gaza without Israel's say. Israel controls their electricity, their water supply, and currently they're being massacred with 63 children dead because of Israel at the time I make this call. So please, I ask you to support this resolution and be a leader, speak up. It's the right thing to do. And you will be on the right side of history if you do that. Thank you very much for your consideration. And that's it. I mean, I usually end up babbling on far too long when I call a member of Congress or my representative. Um, but you don't have to do that. You could just keep it short and sweet. You can just say, hi, my name is blank. My phone number is blank. Uh, please support AOC's resolution condemning the arms sale to Israel. That's all you really need to say. It's not difficult. And when she says it's not scary, it's surprising. The number of people who actually say they are a little bit afraid to call is a bit startling to me. And um, a lot of people have social anxiety, and sometimes it helps if they see individuals like me do something really simple and just make a call. And I've gotten a lot of great feedback uh, from people who say that when they see me make a call to a member of Congress— they feel a little bit better about doing it themselves. Nine times out of 10, you're never going to talk to an individual. At best, you'll talk to a staffer who will write down your message, and that's it. They'll relay the message to the member of Congress. But it's it's not anything to be afraid of. Um, you know, if you stumble over your own words or you don't necessarily articulate yourself perfectly, that's fine. We're all human beings. What matters is that you get your point across, and it's relatively easy to do that so long as you care about this issue. So I would encourage you to follow AO AOC's lead here and make the call to your representative. And we will leave that there. Absolute credit where it's due. AOC hasn't necessarily been the best on the issue of Israel-Palestine, but over the course of the last couple of weeks, I have been pleasantly, pleasantly uh, surprised and, and delighted to see the way that she's uh, spoken out on behalf of Palestinian human rights. I'm very happy about this. And um, it's nice to have leaders in Congress now because this is something that's new. We've never had members of Congress really lead the charge against Israeli apartheid. And, and I really want to give her credit because this is uh, things like this, it matters, even if it might be really difficult to actually pass this resolution.